Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today, where we will be talking about how to centralize and secure file transfers organization wide. I'm here with my co hosts, Heath Kath and Michael Barford. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello. Just a couple quick comments before we begin. We are recording today's event, and we will be sending the link out to you afterwards. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation using the question section on the right hand side of your screen. And we'll go ahead and answer them throughout the presentation and during Q&A at the end. Finally, a survey will also be popping up at the end of the presentation. Your participation in that will provide us some valuable feedback. And in addition, any questions that weren't answered during today's event will be answered um, throughout that survey. All right, let me introduce you to our presenters. Michael Barford is a technical consultant for Help Systems with over five years experience in file and data processing. Michael has helped customers design and deploy scalable solutions that meet ever stricter security requirements. Michael's background has been in the payments industry with work on web design, deployment, and integration of PCI DSS compliance solutions for payment processing. His current focus focuses are on helping customers securely manage and maintain key, file, key files for business processing or ad hoc file transfer. Keith Kath is a senior solutions consultant here at Help Systems, working with the Go Anywhere Managed File Transfer product line. Keith provides pre-sales support, specializing in demos and proof of concepts. He is also a member of the professional services team, providing additional training and assistance to our Go Anywhere users. All right, let's move on to the agenda. So for today, we're going to start off with introducing you to Help Systems. Then we're going to talk through some of the common data security challenges and collaborate collaborative tools and their risks. Then we're going to go through help systems proposal for safe collaboration within your organization and then wrap up with some Q and A. All right, with that gentlemen, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you and you can take it away. Thank you very much, Angela. And thank you everybody for joining us today. So managing your file and data movements is absolutely a very key and important aspect. And it's a pleasure to be able to speak with you all today on this topic. Centralizing and securing file transfers is our focus for today, but it's always good to know that here at Help Systems, we really can solve any and every security and automation need that you might have. Be it a case of needing to add data classification to files, or simply um, looking to put, put in place data loss prevention, or even automation automated processes to remove an element of human error. If you have some sort of an IT requirement, then chances are that we have a solution for you. And you can be safe in the knowledge to know that no matter where you are, chances are that you're pretty close to a help systems office. We've got footprints over in America, along with our headquarters, and we've got them in Europe and Australia, just to name a few of them. But you're also in good hands in that we're well established. We've been, we started way back out in 1982, and we're just short of coming Come into our 40th anniversary. So the first topic we're going to take a look at is going to be the data security challenges and where I'm hopefully going to be able to set a little bit of scene for you um, and give you a bit of overview of some of the challenges that you may face. So it's no surprise to anyone that there's a new there's numerous ways to get information moved from point A to point B or from one place to another. It could be in the form of a colleague simply passing you a note um, they could be sending uh, you an email or they could even be installing some sort of application from the internet there's so many ways to actually grab different types of information and these different um, ways of grabbing that information can can change as well oftentimes the processes for getting this information becomes commonplace and sometimes they can even be used inappropriately and this is particularly the case when it does come to things like um, sensitive or business critical type of information, things like business reports or customer data. Through legacy processes or even simply complacency, insecure methods for moving data around can, can become the norm. And this does potentially open up that very same information to being vulnerable. 
We can see this being evidenced with countless number of um, reported data breaches over the past few years. Um, things like emails being leaked or database records being somehow grabbed in, and received into the wrong hands. And it can also be exacerbated by making use of out-of-date protocols, out-of-date processes. Um, for example, making use of things like SSL version 3. Um, these out-of-date protocols are inherently open up to vulnerabilities as they have had vulnerabilities around them found. Having numerous tools used to get this data moved around can exacerbate the issue as well. It makes it extremely difficult to manage, update, or even generally kind of maintain um, the processes that are that are in place to get that data moved around. And there's a number of ways that the problem itself can rear its ugly head. Uh, but commonly, we see it emerging when um, collaborating with individuals or teams who may be in different geographies, they could be um, different trading partners, or even with your customers. And this feeds into just a few trends that we um, that's been found happening around uh, around security and when it does come to data. So the very first thing I want to highlight here is this um, this statistic at the top. Um, so in Q3 of 2020 alone, there was a record breaking. I don't believe anyone's really going to be celebrating uh, this particular record, but there was a record breaking number of records stolen. And in just the quarter itself, um, it was estimated about eight billion records had been leaked or or kind of um, taken taken away from where they uh, from the organisations or places where they they originated. When we compare that to the whole of 2017 and how many records were were reported to have been stolen, which was only 2.5 billion, you can see that it's very much a, a, a problem that is is becoming more and more commonplace, no matter where you go. In fact, in 2020, um, we did see a number of major breaches occur. You may have remembered, um, perhaps at the beginning of the year, uh, companies such as Microsoft. Um, it was it was found out that uh, about 250 million customer service records, um, as well as support records, had been found to have been leaked. And these records dated all the way back to 2005. So some really, really legacy um, types of information there. Later on in the, in the year, in November, um, it was also discovered that about 2 million records of staff, user and subscriber data was leaked from Mashable.com. And no one's really immune to this either. Uh, when we look back, it was actually recently discovered that uh, the United Nations themselves were subject to some sort of data breach in 2019. Since they have diplomatic immunity, they aren't actually required to divulge what data was taken or even notify the individuals who who may have been affected by that. So these problems are definitely um, are definitely kind of exacerbating and, and increasing in frequency as well as in volume. And uh, you'll find that more and more uh, kind of efforts need to be put in place to ensure that that doesn't happen. And this directly translates to things like a monetary loss to the organisation, uh, be it in the case of loss, rep of loss of reputation or just physical um, information taken away. And it's becoming more and more expensive as time goes on as well. So with the recent pandemic, home working has really become commonplace for a number of people and a number of organisations. Uh, the impact of the pandemic does vary region to region, uh, but trends are generally indicating that a significant number of people will continue to be working and incorporating remote work into, the, into their general kind of um, working environment for the, for, for the foreseeable future. Remote working itself does of course have its own risks. You're effectively adding in an additional layer between your organization and, and your colleagues. And the outside world um, introduced into this may uh, may mean that certain information which is which has traditionally been handled by colleagues and by individuals may be at more risk to things like um, security breaches and vulnerabilities. There's a few key tips that we've got to, to ensure that you keep your remote working environment um, safe. So on the previous slide, we briefly touched on, on the impact of, of data breaches. And commonly, that does occur to, due to human error. It's still the, the single most common way for, for data to be leaked or, or breached um, uh, kind of elsewhere. A recent report found that about 99% of cyber attacks does requ do require some level of human intervention. Um, and that could be through the form of things like man in the middle attacks, where users are logging into portals and that information is taken away from them. Or it could be malware infected apps, uh, where the malware itself has been downloaded through something like an email. 
much of this does come down to simply educating your employees about the risks, um, such as using free Wi-Fi connections. Um, and then also security awareness training is really key to ensure that the employees themselves can be trusted to do the processes and the duties which, the, um, which they, they're meant to do outside of the, the, the local office controls. Another tip we've got is establishing standards. Uh, put in place standards and good practices for how your colleagues and how individuals treat data, particularly personal data. Um, so any users who have access to it have some sort of procedure that they can follow. Process or or um, or process data on the on, on the kind of only given access if required um, kind of model. Ensure that not every colleague has access to certain um, bits of information and any information which they do need access to, which is sensitive in nature, um, is, is restricted and controlled through either a controlled um, process, such as logging in through a, um, maybe through a VPN tunnel, something like that, or, or through some other kind of method, which is then easily, well, and easily and well documented. Another thing here is that many tools um, which your organization may have deployed have been built and designed to work internally only. Uh, perhaps you've deployed particular solutions before and remote working was re even a possibility. So it's really important that anyone who has access to these um, applications and any relevant data at home, uh, both from desktop and mobile devices, goes through these processes and, and tools which you've put in place. Um, and that can commonly, again, be done through something like a VPN. Try and avoid using shadow IT. Um, try not to use that, those, uh, I guess, free tools, which you can lose quite a lot of visibility in how users are interfacing with it and how information is being accessed and where it's being accessed from. And also keep in touch with colleagues. Deploy a, a sort of a, like an agile-like um, type of environment to ensure that communication itself doesn't break down. Frequently get in touch with colleagues, get an understanding of how they're doing processes and ensure that you're you're in the know with what processes they are, they themselves are running through. So free tools are great. Um, they're really, really good for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, being free is uh, it's fantastic. And there's a huge wealth of free tools out there to kind of enable you or enable individuals to get things moving. They're very, they're generally very easy to deploy by, and they, um, and they can kind of help to mitigate the ease of actually doing remote working in the, in the first place. And they could be very simple to use to collaborate with others, for example. So it does make it very easy to work in that remote environment, but it, they cannot be used if you do want a truly managed environment. Again, speaking of that shadow IT effect, you really want to try and move away from that. Um, your colleagues making use of services and products with without any type of visibility is what really drives that shadow IT process and makes it so that you don't have that, that kind of level of knowledge or understanding of where things are moving. Some of the most popular EFSS and collaboration cloud platforms are not actually secure enough to host sensitive data. Things that might fall under PCI DSS or HIPAA or high tech, for example, um, they may not actually be able to be stored within these, within these cloud, solu um, cloud solutions. A secure platform gives you the power to send critical information without worrying what that it may conflict with these industry or government regulations. And part of working with these shadow IT cloud devices and applications is that the choice of data storage can be really difficult to, to control. Do you ultimately know whereabouts that information is going to be stored? And do you know um, how, how it's being accessed? Working remotely can result in a bit of a communication bubble as well. Um, it can even close off communications and ensure it, it, can, it can make it so that uh, processes which were previously handled by numerous different teams and given more visibility, um, may be kind of closed off and, and, and isolated to, to individuals instead. Cloud storage is the obvious choice to ensure that data is placed in a well-known area that is protected. However, enforcing the use of the chosen storage is much more difficult. Teams must understand the importance of collaboration and how to work together using centralized cloud repositories. Oftentimes, free tools deployed for a business case may not provide sufficient logging to actually help analyze where an issue may lie, which could be very costly when it does come to dealing with a critical case. The ease of use of cloud-based applications for remote and collaborative work increases the surface area of cyber attacks. 
And now I'm going to pass on to my colleague Heath. All right. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. Some really great information there. You know, some things to really think about around your file transfers, you know, your team, your organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I agree. You know, with more and more employees working remotely, you know, working from home, having the right tools in place so the users can get their job done, but again, get it done in a secure way, right? And to manage everything. So this really brings me to this topic here, you know, why manage file transfers? Uh, our, our topic today is around the centralization, centralization and some may see this really around standardization as you've been mentioned as well. It will be more beneficial if a single solution can do what you need to do versus trying to manage several solutions. And in some cases, some solutions may only run on specific platforms. So now you may have additional hardware to manage. You know, overall, this providing some limitations and just those challenges of managing all the different solutions. As many of you, you may know today, you may have several methods and tools being used to transfer files across your organization. It's hard to manage to secure all these different solutions when many are doing their own thing to get the files moved from point A to point B. Costly data breaches have occurred, you know, as Mike kind of hinted there, you know, with when there are so many different file sharing applications of which are also not centralized, that are not all that secure. Today, you know, talking about go anywhere managed file transfers, it's actually different. It's a centralized solution, centralized MFT solution, your managed file transfer, that you can deploy on-prem, in the cloud, on platforms like Microsoft Azure and AWS, or within your own hybrid environments. Our secure managed file transfer solution runs easily on platforms like Linux, Windows, AIX, the IBMI, iMac, and more. We even offer a SaaS solution, going or MFT as a service of which help systems will help manage, will manage the hardware and software for you in AWS. You know, once you have going or MFT installed where you choose, you simply use the browser of your choice, like IE, FileZilla, you know, Chrome, Opera, to manage and to share these files. So it becomes really easy and very powerful for you. With Go Anywhere, we actually offer many types of different protocols to help you transfer those files from secure FTP, FTPS, AS2, HTTPS, SMB, and more. You also will see that it's an automation. You know, automation is key. The more you can automate, the better off you will be in the long run with less chance of a user error, you know, as again, Michael mentioned that earlier as well, you know, those are, it's a key area of just things going wrong very simply. But also another thought to think about, you know, who has the time and knowledge to do what you do around these file transfers if you're out of the office? Go Anywhere MFT is a single solution that offers both an admin site and a user site, making it very easy to set up and to manage your file transfers, but also to manage your users and your trading partners as needed. In fact, you will be able to define what protocols your users can use to connect to your server, like HTTPS, Secure FTP, FTPS, AS2, and so forth. You know, once connected based on their permissions, what folder or folders can they access? What functions or permissions do they have, like listing, uploading, downloading, renaming, deleting, etc.? You're in full control of what they can do and see out there. You also learn that Go Anywhere has built-in integration task. And as a teaser has shown in the slide, you know, GoAnywhere can reach out to an ICAP server like ClearSwift to automatically scan files, scanning for DLP, your data loss prevention, but also to be able to scan for those files that are coming in for viruses. And then at that point, to be able to perform the necessary actions, you know, if the file is to move forward because it's clean, or redact information, block it, or put that file in a quarantine folder, or simply delete it. Each company, you know, regardless of size and industry, requires exchanging information with internal and or external collaborators. You know, maybe it's payments, invoices, policies, inventories, or just those quarterly reports. You know, today, some of you may be using a less secure method of file transfers. You know, traditionally, you know, the way to exchange this information has been around just plain old FTP or SSH. These are really no longer viable protocols. You know, maybe, you are using those very popular cloud type services like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, Salesforce, and so forth. Many different services, some with very little to no tracking or limited to those that security area. 
maybe you have non-secure APIs that you are opening some security vulnerabilities within the applications that are sharing the data back and forth. I still come across a few that still use the old standard email. You know, it's quick, it's simple, right? To add to the list, to this list, you know, maybe you're saving information to an external disk or a portable drive and then manually delivering the content yourself. You know, these are no also no longer viable protocols as we need to tighten things up, especially around transmitting that potential PII or PHI or PCI information, you know, that sense of information that you got to keep control of. The last item, automated scripts. These scripts could be awesome, right? They could be so complex, they can do a lot. However, you know, what we find is that they're typically hard to maintain or to manage them, and some are just very challenging just to use them. This is probably one of the biggest challenges, you know, within MFT space. That is not having one place to go, not having one centralized administration pane of glass to manage all the different movements all the different file transfers and maybe data manip manipulation that you need to do. The administration of complex scripts, multiple tools and different solutions that you need today. Maybe you have people using a free FTP server and then someone else using an open PGP studio for their PGP encryption. And somebody else is using something else, you know, for the file transfer protocol of the process. You know, it's a complete mix or a mess, if you will. But don't forget the mix of protocols. What do your trading partners require you guys to use to transfer files to them or pull files back? The management of service users. You know, this is the case in the systems and the applications that the users need to use. User management can be a huge problem, whether it's administrative users, whether it's the users that connect to up to your system to do FTP or to log into a web client not having a centralized place is very difficult to manage all of them, but also can create security holes as far as creating different service accounts. The lack of integration, you know, to Active Directory, or it's maybe just too hard to set up and manage for you. You need a solution that makes it easy to integrate with Active Directory or generic LDAP or even LDAP managed accounts. If you don't have AD or LDAP, you must have, at least have another option that can make it easy to manage these users through their individual user accounts and groups. All of that needs to be able to set up within that application. How about managing the encryption keys? You know, these keys and certificates can be all over the place. Maybe you have your own PK environment for certificates, but you use OpenSSH, some type of servers for PGP keys. And then maybe you generate the SSH keys using PuTTY or something else. The point here again, your tools should be centralized, not decentralized. You know, not to mention who's managing all this, who's taking ownership of all this. One more key, you know, point to mention, many users today may struggle with their tools because they lack automation. The more that you can automate, the better. The less user interaction, the less that could go wrong. Plus, what if the person who is doing all these manual steps to push or pull files out of the off is out of the office? Excuse me. Who has the knowledge and the time to back up that person to run through all those steps? Does your process today have built an auto retry logic? What if you are doing a file transfer, especially on a larger file to a partner and you know in midstream? the connection goes down. You know, maybe they rebooted the server or you did. Do you have some auto resume logic built in to pick up where it left off versus starting all over? Or just to help with a successful delivery? Do you have simple workflows that you can build and automate your entire file transfer? Usually we see companies building scripts, sometimes several scripts, just to pick up a file, encrypt it, and deliver it. Now, if this is you, you're probably lacking an easy to use graphical user interface. You're not able to build projects and to really fully automate the whole entire workflow. Limited control or you know, limited controls of your secure file movements. You know, maybe you're putting files into the hands of other users that really don't understand the sensitivity of the actual data. You're depending on them to know that it's sensitive and you're assuming that they will use that secure mail tool that they have or hoping they will use some secure method of pushing the files out. 
Do they know how to encrypt with PGP and so and so forth? Do they have the right key even? You know, all this is really manual and very risky way of managing these files. Many times we hear that encryption and decryption are still a manual process, and it's a lot of work for these users. And typically we find that they complain, it's a pain in the rear for them. So this kind of brings it back, you know, so why manage file transfers? You know, this key point, it's a centralized solution installed and managed on a server that you choose giving you a lot of control, security, and flexibility around your file movement. Go anywhere is a simple way, a solution to securely transfer your files. A centralized tool for your administrators, one tool really the same tool that allows them to build your automated file transfers to manage the keys, manage the users, and maintain your file transfer securely. A single pane of glass, if you will. A solution that offers full traceability and control. A tool that gives you the visibility, the auditing of your file transfers, and what your users are doing. And the security that can be defined in a single solution, you know, helping you become compliant as you may have strict state privacy laws, you may have to be HIPAA, SOX, ISO, PCI, GLBA compliant, and so forth. And the last point listed, you know, automation. Automate your file transfers. You know, no longer do you need to rely on other solutions to kick off your file transfers or users to manually kick off that file movement themselves. Go anywhere MFT offers scheduling, folder monitoring, and trigger events to help you kick off these workflows automatically. Earlier, I threw a teaser at you about integration. You know, where Go anywhere automated workflows can integrate with other solutions, you will be able to run native scripts, applications, MQ from one solution if needed. You know, yes, Go anywhere is a great, very secure solution for your file transfers and more. With a little bit of help, GoAnywhere can also integrate with like an ICAP server to scan the contents of files. You know, what if a file coming in has a virus or some malware is attached to it? What if a user is trying to send out a document that contains PII, PCI, or PHI information? That what if, you know, how do you handle today? Do you have some type of DLP, data loss prevention in place? You know, for over five years, you know, many of our customers within Go Anywhere have been using Go Anywhere and ClearSwift together, another solution helps us working hand in hand, a tight integration between MFT and with this ClearSwift ICAP gateway, gateway to scan documents, scan those documents that are coming in or going up the door as needed, right? You know, files that are coming in will automatically be scanned and are then moved as directed if they're clean, or if a certain file type or a virus is found to delete them or to move the documents to a quarantine folder. If by chance those files, the docs that are being sent out contain personal information to either block the document completely or redact the embedded information before it's actually going out, before it's sent. This here is just really, this slide is just kind of a, a really, just for your reference, it really kind of recaps the previous screen, just walking through the process of a file being scanned with an ICAP solution like ClearSwift and then fall, you know, fall through the process to move it on as needed. So jumping ahead, you know, just going back to the main topic here today, you know, that centralized solution, right? So here with Go Anywhere, standardization, centralization, one flexible tool. And before I jump into a quick demonstration, you know, quick just an overview of Go Anywhere MFT, just so you know, Go Anywhere can act as an inbound for services like the web client utilizing HTTPS. AS2, secure FTP, FTPS, and so forth. Users like yourself, other employees, customers, trading partners can easily perform ad hoc and batch requests to easily share those files as needed. Go Anywhere offers different tools allowing users to access the data how they need to and different protocols as I kind of defined earlier. So you have full control over them. You'll see that with Go Anywhere, you know, we have what we call secure folders. Your ad hoc file transfers using HTTPS simply set up an HTTPS listener within Go Anywhere and give a, the users a web user ID and password and a browser. It's a very nice GUI interface of which you can rebrand using your own images, your logos, and the once the user's connected, they, can, they could then simply drop off files with you or pick them up. It's all based on the permissions you set for them. It's, you know, it's really neat, our customers really love that feature. It's really easy. 
we have GoDrive, a cloud-based file and sharing alternative available within GoAnywhere. It provides enterprise file syncing and sharing, EFSS, services for your employees, partners, and customers. It's really kind of a replacement for Box and Dropbox. With GoDrive, GoDrive provides PCI level of security using AES 256-bit encryption, and it's also tracking that file movement, of which you really don't get with other solutions, other tools. We have secure forms. It's like a web-based questionnaire. You will be able to customize these forms with fields to collect the information that you need to from the users. It supports like text boxes, radio button, buttons, check boxes, drop-down list, and more. These forms could allow them to attach some documents as well. Once filled out, they simply press the submit button to send you the information and possibly some files too. And then an automated workflow in the back end, a project will, uh, will pick up and process that information. You know, maybe updating a, a data table, updating a spreadsheet, creating a user profile, taking the uh, attachments, encrypting them, delivering them, sending some confirmation emails out. It's all to you guys, what you do in the back end, all automatically. We also have secure mail, allowing you to email secure data, the attachments and the body of the email that never ends up in your Exchange server. Secure mail allows users to quickly send confidential messages and files using the convenience of email and the security of HTTPS. The message, the attachments are automatically encrypted and GoInner sends an email notification to the recipient with a link allowing the users to download the message and files over a secure HTTPS connection directly from your server. You may require a password and the users to have a valid user account, a user profile and password. There are no files restrictions unless you set one. You can also set the number of days before the email package expires and even the number of times it can be downloaded. Another nice option around secure mail, let's say you're working with a trading partner or a customer who needs to send you some information and some documents securely, quickly, and easily. With secure mail, you could send a request file email. The recipient this time receives the email with an upload link versus download. So now they can easily upload those files directly to your server. And once those docs arrive, you'll be notified. Then we have the last thing on the list here around cloud connectors. And we have a really an easy way for you guys to integrate with different web service applications. We have several different cloud connectors available within our marketplace, plus options even to build your own. I have a better list here in the next slide. So we have at least 38 cloud connectors available today of which you can integrate within these workflows to be able to reach out to SharePoint, ShareFile, you know, Jams, Jura, you name it. With Go Anywhere, you will be able to connect and share files with multiple file systems and databases. Go Anywhere also allows you to connect to many different types of servers using different protocols to push and pull files and even monitor for files to be picked up and moved as needed. And security is also a key to being successful, right? You know, GoInner gives you the tools to be secure, to apply the correct type and level of encryption as you guys need to. Several factors must be considered before choosing an encryption standard to follow. How sensitive is the data being exchanged? You know, how will the data be transmitted? We'll be using secure FTP or FTPS, email or HTTP. Uh, are the files large and should they be compressed? What encryption method will be used if zipped? Should the files be encrypted at rest before the transmission or should the connection, the channel itself be encrypted or do you guys require both? What encryption standards do your trading partners require or support? You know, a trading partner may ultimately dictate the encryption standards which they support. For instance, you know, many banking and financial institutions, you know, require that customers encrypt files using open PGP encryption standard, but then also follow a secure file transfer protocol like secure FTP. Goenner MFT gives you the tools to comply to that. A small handful of use cases to kind of, kind of highlight before I jump in the demonstration. Here we have a government in the public sector. California city government uses GoAnywhere to help streamline their file sharing, sending surveillance clips and voice recordings. And then we have the US state 
government using secure forms for military personnel to safely and conveniently actually send their, their ballots in electronically. A pharmaceutical company in the UK needed a centralized solution to help that can help them perform several steps actually. And with Go Anywhere, they're able to get XML files, read them, and based on the content, the actual data itself, perform the necessary actions within the workflows all automatically. A US-based manufacturing corporation, they needed a solution that will give them more, greater control over their file transfers. By using Go Anywhere, they were able to have a centralized solution that helped them build a standard process, sending these files securely. They are no longer doing manual IT requests, manual downloads, and no longer distributing data via standard email. There are actually many, many use cases actually listed on our website, uh, but the, this fourth use case that I grabbed is around global music corporation, a global music corporation. They needed a secure solution, something that allows them and their users to share files securely without opening up any firewalls. Go Anywhere provided that centralization and the security that they needed, at the same time allowing their authorized users to better control and see their file movements. All right, let me jump into a quick demonstration. And the focus here is around the solution, you right? A centralized solution, giving the tools that you need to be better, more successful in transferring files securely. What you're looking at here is actually the Go Anywhere MFT, as the point of view as an administrator, an admin who sets this up. And just really quickly, you have one, one page, one centralization, one dashboard that you can see what's happening in your server. So at a quick glance, I can make sure my listeners are up and running, I can see my statuses of my jobs, users are logged in, and a lot, lot more. Good, very quick glance. But to kind of walk you through some of the options on the top here, and if you guys would like to have a little deeper dive and understand a little more about the functionality, capability, we would love to give you a demonstration of it as well. But just kind of walking through it, we got the home, which is where I started here, right? We got our initial dashboard. Then we have resources. Resources, what you'll see here is that it's one place that's kind of defined that connection to your different servers, you know, using the different protocols. Within these resources, it's one place to set them up, one place to manage them, one place to test them. You can see we have S3 buckets, your different AS2, 3, and 4 type servers, Azure Blob Storage, et cetera. All these different resources can be set up. Your know, network shares are very common as well to be able to access different shares to share files back and forth. And I would say probably one of the most common type of connections are through SecureFTP. And as I stated, it's one place to set up, one place to manage, and one place to even test these connections. So you can set them up, define them what's required, the IP address, the DNS name, profile password, maybe even a key. Again, a centralized solution that provides the key management. So we have a built-in key vault. In this example, the key vault up here would actually have that SSH key from that user that we need to use to connect to the server. Once it's in the key vault, we just select it. That's it. And then, as I mentioned, test it. We want you to be able to set them up, test it right from one location, and blue is good. All right. Once we have the uh, resources set up, we have workflows. This is where you're going to start creating these projects, the step by step process that you need to follow. So we create these projects, and then after that, we get into more of the automation, where you feel on a schedule it, monitor a folder for documents you've picked up, or set up some triggered events to react to users cutting to your server, and to instantly react to what they're doing if they're uploading a file or downloading a file. Just a quick little example here today in a project. From this project, you have different folders, different things you can set up, or different folders you can set up to help manage these projects. Create a folder, subfolder by a customer, a region, a department, it's up to you guys. Here we have a folder, we have a few different projects in there. Let me just kind of walk you through one really quickly here today. And we do have different ways to help you build these projects. We have templates too as well to make it even easier. But just to give you a quick walkthrough, we have a timestamp representing today's date and format of which you can use maybe to rename a file, create a directory with that today's date on it, whatever it might be. Using the PGP encrypt task. That's over here on the left hand side. Expand the PGP. There's that encrypt task. You can easily drag and drop or double click to bring that action, that task into your workflow. We got the files that need to be encrypted. 
maybe apply a filter and to include or exclude certain files, but also take note of the key. You know, when you're encrypting someone's file or documents, they're gonna share their public key with you. Again, put in the key vault and select the right key to encrypt it with. And then we're gonna deliver it as needed. And this one here, I'm just kind of put into a temporary space, but I am keeping track of them through a variable. Variables will make it easy, easy to manage, more powerful in the long run. Because of these variables, here we got encrypted files created, just whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do a next step here to transfer these encrypted files to my trading partner or to that remote server. Select that resource as you would define earlier from a drop down list. Transfer those files. Here I'm using that variable that was created in the previous step, again, keeping track of those files that I encrypted. And then I am transferring the files to that remote server. Simply put, click on those three dots browse and it actually uses that resource you defined or selected earlier. I'm on that remote server. It's really easy to build that path up and transfer it. You can also do additional steps. Here we have a transfer. Maybe you want to archive those files also, throw them in an archive folder. That's where I'm pending today's date on it. Typically, I would then maybe, as an option, delete or move those files. Up to you guys how you want to do it. This is my test system, so I don't want to delete them, but it's really easy. Using variables, I can go back and quickly clean them up. And then this is a little temporary workspace, but you can validate it at a high level. Does it look good? Yes, there we go, execute it. And you can actually run this project. Again, in the long run, you wanna automate it, as I talked about earlier. Set up the scheduler or set up a folder monitor to do that, all from the same tool. There it is, blue is good, view to the job log, and you can verify exactly what just happened. Four files encrypted, kind of just going through quickly here. Four files are uploaded to my remote server. They're all PGP files, et cetera and even copied, you know, archived with uh, today's date on it and things like that. So as you can see, all these different things are happening pretty easily and all the tracing, all the auditing is built into it. All right, so that's a quick little walkthrough of a workflow. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that I do wanna show you too as well, because these tools like Go Anywhere, this one here provides some really great outstanding built-in help. A solution that can quickly, you click on these little question mark has built-in application level help. It's content aware. It knows what you're looking at. It knows that I was looking at the security FTP task and you can find some quick help on that. So again, a solution that gives you all the information that you need, some detailed information, screenshots, and sometimes several examples to help you out. All right. So that again, that was workflows. Again, next thing you look at your automation pieces there from scheduling monitors, services. So now I'm kind of switching gears. For go anywhere to also act as a listener, you know, that server side for users to connect to your server using different protocols, one place to set it up and manage them as well. Then it's all about the users themselves. Yeah, your administrators, the admins here, as I'm doing right now, but also the users that need to share files with you. We group them together as a web user, but they could be using Secure FTP with FileZilla or WinSCP. But then also, just to give you a quick note here, we have different templates and you know groups to help you set them up and manage them to find different login methods, as I mentioned earlier, to be able to utilize Active Directory, LDAP, RSA Ready, uh, RSA, uh, Okta, et cetera, or turn on multi-factor. Reporting, to be able to look and run different reports to see what's happening on your server, to automate the distribution of the reports, to be able to set up SLAs, those service level agreements, your audit logs, to be able to drill into the audit logs, seeing what's happening on your server in one area. You can easily export the information, you can also apply filters to help you find what you're looking for. You can also break down the service logs by different protocol types to see what the users are doing based on that protocol type, downloading, et cetera, what they're downloading, what IP address they're running from, et cetera, and more. To find different login settings, what do you want to do there, or your log settings, excuse me. Uh, encryption, as I mentioned, GoAnywhere provides a built-in KMS, key management system that allows you to manage your certificates, your SSH and your PGP keys from one area where you can import, you can create new key pairs very easily. So again, add key pairs, import, whatever you need to do as well. Uh, encrypted folders to set up files at rest being protected with AES 256-bit encryption. The system to set up different set security settings like FIPS 140-2 to defining some automatic IP blacklisting and then additional help. So again, one solution that gives you a lot of information there. All right, I'm gonna jump out of there. Hopefully I give you some quick ideas of what GoAnywhere can do. 
at this point, I'm going to kind of start hand things back to Angela to see what kind of questions we may have out there on the floor. Excellent. Thank you so much, Heath. Great job, both you and Michael. I appreciate your time. Um, we have a couple questions. I know that we have been answering them live in, in the um, GoToWebinar platform, but for the greater group, I think we can also ask them here too. So a um, couple things. First one, for AD integration, can you integrate with multiple clients AD so that they can all potentially use SSO? Yeah, great question. Absolutely. Um, and you know, absolutely, you can sign, you can define the different types of authentication methods and you can define them for different users, not just the admins versus the, the web users as we call them, but individual users within that group too. So we can define them as needed and if you want more information about that, we definitely give you, you know, reach out to you as well. Definitely. Excellent. Just to echo on to that as well, um, yeah. you can you can filter through different um, groups within AD as well. So mm -hmm. um, you can filter, you, I guess you can connect into different AD um, AD environments as well as uh, filtering through the groups. So you can have multiple different types of groups and different types of users set up. So if you've got things like support personnel and then um, who might want to be doing password resets and then developers who want to, to do things with those workflows, you can kind of split them out that way. Lovely. Um, next question. If services aren't running and alerts generated, excuse me, if services aren't running, are alerts generated or integrations with monitoring tools such as SolarWinds? Ah, uh, good question. And you know, that's one thing I didn't highlight and I should have because it's really, it's something I, I really believe in that every process, every job should have some type of alert set up. You want to be informed. I, I mentioned a little bit about SLAs, but going beyond that, you want to be informed if things are successful. You can be informed if things fail. And yes, SLAs is something that didn't happen that should have, you know, if a file is supposed to arrive by a certain time frame, be notified. But also these services, I mean, alerts and logs, they're built right into Go Anywhere, and you can set up and customize these alerts to notify you if you can't connect to a server that you're monitoring. Again, if the files don't arrive, if Go Anywhere is being started or shut down, you can be notified. Just to expand too about keys, you can set up automated alerts to inform you in advance if a PGP key, um, or a certificate is about to expire. So you can define it to notify and say 10, 20, 30 days, whatever in advance, so you can take that time to go out there and rebuild and refresh those keys. And to expand a little more, and I'm probably taking some of Michael's thunder here because I, I know he wants to talk, but <laughs> go in here can also integrate with SIM, you know, different platforms. So you can push these logs to your own syslog server if needed too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you did. I didn't get to mention it, but he did a, a, a great demonstration there. Um, one thing I do, do like to mention is in the actual workflows themselves, you can incorporate your own error handling. Um, you can say when particular tasks are going to error. You can look out for, for certain, uh, I guess, responses or, or kind of behaviors that you're probably expecting. And with that information, you can then put in place logic to to really extend how you're going to going to run through processes because ultimately any, any kind of job you're doing is is going to have some sort of process which needs to handle or incorporate some sort of error handling and it might be a case of just popping a, a message into a into an mq um it could be sending an email out or it could be sending an, um, an sms message but there's, mm -hmm. there's a number of ways you can incorporate that into there yep and i've been coming across a lot of users that want a successful message so in other words what files were just picked up and transferred so they want to keep track of what files have been picked up and moved so they can be alerted either when it happens or at the end of the day a report gets sent out thank you for those questions yeah really good ones excellent well, if there are any other questions that weren't answered during the presentation, please feel free to submit those during that survey that'll pop up at the close of today's session. Um, Michael, Heath, thank you so much for the great presentation and demonstration. And um, please feel free to fill out that survey after that, that pops up here at the close of the event. And uh, we'll be sending that recording out to you shortly. So thank you everyone for your time and we'll be signing off. Thanks, everyone. Michael, great job as well. Appreciate your help. Thank you, everybody. Likewise. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.